Hi. I will tell you the story of St. Catherine. Catherine was born in Siena, Italy, to Giacomo di Benincasa, a clock deer, and Lapa Piagenti, possibly daughter of a local poet. Born in 1347, she was the 24th out of 25 children. She took the habit of the Dominican tertiaries after vigorous protests from the tertiaries themselves. In about 1366, St. Catherine experienced what she described in her letters as a mystical marriage with Jesus. Biographer Raymond of Capping also records that she was told by Christ to leave her withdrawn life and enter the public life of the world. Catherine dedicated much of her life to helping the ill and the poor, where she took care of them in hospitals or homes. Her early pious activities in Siena attracted a group of followers, both women and men, while they also brought her to the attention of the Dominican Order, which called her to Florence in 1374 to interrogate her for possible heresy. After this visit, in which she was deemed sufficiently orthodox, she began traveling with her followers throughout northern and central Italy advocating reform of the clergy and the launch of a new crusade and advising people that repentance and renewal could be done through the total love for God. Physical travel was not the only way in which Catherine made her views known. In the early 1370s, she began writing letters to men and women of her circle, increasingly widening her audience to include figures in authority as she begged for peace between the republics and principalities of Italy and for the return of the papacy from Avignon to Rome. She carried on a long correspondence with Pope Gregory Sy, also asking him to reform the clergy and the administration of the papal states. In June of 1376 Catherine went to Avignon herself as ambassador of Florence to make peace with the papal states, but was unsuccessful. She also tried to convince Pope Gregory Sy to return to Rome. She impressed the Pope so much that he returned his administration to Rome in January, 1377. Following Gregory's death and during the Western Schism of 1378 she was an adherent of Pope Urban VI, who summoned her to Rome, and stayed at Pope Urban VI's court and tried to convince nobles and cardinals of his legitimacy. She lived in Rome until her death in 1380. The problems of the Western Schism would trouble her until the end of her life. St. Catherine's letters are considered one of the great works of early Tuscan literature. More than 300 letters have survived. In her letters to the Pope, she often referred to him affectionately as Papa or Daddy Babbo in Italian. Other correspondents include her various confessors, among them Raymond of Capua, the kings of France and Hungary, the infamous mercenary John Hawkwood, the Queen of Naples, members of the Visconti family of Milan, and numerous religious figures. Roughly one-third of her letters are to women. Her other major work is the Dialogue of Divine Providence, a dialogue between the soul who rises up to God and God himself, and recorded between 1377 and 1378 by members of her circle. Often assumed to be illiterate, Catherine is acknowledged by Raymond in his life of her as capable of reading both Latin and Italian, and another hagiographer, Tommaso Caffarini, claimed that she could write. St. Catherine died of a stroke in Rome, the spring of 1380, at the age of 33. The people of Siena wished to have her body. A story is told of a miracle whereby they were partially successful, knowing that they could not smuggle her whole body out of Rome, they decided to take only her head which they placed in a bag. When stopped by the Roman guards, they prayed to St. Catherine to help them, confident that she would rather have her body or at least part thereof in Siena. They opened the bag to show the guards, it appeared no longer to hold her head but to be full of rose petals. Once they got back to Sina they reopened the bag and her head was visible once more. Due to the story, St. Catherine is often seen holding a rose. The incorruptible head and thumb were entombed in the Basilica of San Domenico, where they remain. St. Catherine's body is buried in the Basilica of Santa Maria Sombra Minerva in Rome, which is near the Pantheon. Is the story of St. Catherine. 
I am Andrew A. S. Statue and thank you for watching. Christine, let us pray for St. Catherine. Oh, yes, Andrew. Let us focus to our Lord and St. Catherine, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A marvelous wonder of the Church, Seraphic Virgin, St. Catherine, because of your extraordinary virtue and the immense good which you accomplish for the Church and society, you are acclaimed and blessed by all people. Oh, turn your benign countenance to me who, confident of your powerful patronage, calls upon you with all the ardor of affection and begs you to obtain, by your prayer, the favors I so ardently desire. You, who are a victim of charity, who in order to benefit your neighbor obtained from God the most stupendous miracles and became the joy and the hope of all, you cannot help but hear the prayers of those who fly into your heart, that heart which you received from the Divine Redeemer in a celestial ecstasy. Yeah. Yes, O oh Seraphic Virgin, demonstrate once again proof of you power and of your flaming charity so that your name will be ever more blessed and exalted. Grant that we, having experienced your most efficacious intercession here on earth, may come one day to thank you in heaven and enjoy eternal happiness with you. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching and God bless. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. Goodbye. Goodbye.